and the young man who had just been killed. All of a sudden, her countenance changed. She just suddenly saw that he was a nice young man. He had only been drunk as a result of his indiscretion, of course. But he did not deliberately kill her parents. It was an accident. And in that instant, she just realized this young man has parents too. He has a family. He's a young man. You know, her heart just melted. She decided to just release him, let him go, forgive him. So she just shot from her seat, ran, and went to hug the young man right there in the courtroom and said, I forgive you. Now, there are many people who can do that. There are so many of us who have been hurt by so many people, different people. Some of us have been hurt by our parents. Some of us have been hurt by our children. Some of us have been hurt by our husbands or our wives. Some of us by our friends. Some by our colleagues in the office. Now, it is impossible for people not to hurt us because we live in an imperfect world. But the real big deal are the effects that those hurts or those offenses have on us. If we do not have the capacity to forgive, then some of those events in our lives that are meant to be temporary become permanent, and they create big problems for us. When we do not forgive, we sometimes hurt ourselves even more than the people that we have refused to forgive. Our own forgiveness evolves into bitterness and a desire for revenge. Now, bitterness in our own hearts will cause all kinds of negative emotions. The bitterness will drive our thinking. Think about it. What kind of ideas, creative or innovative ideas will we get when we are bitter, when we seek revenge, there will be destructive ideas. Our breakthrough ideas will be ideas for destroying somebody's life, or for hurting someone, or for killing someone outright. The mind cannot hold two thoughts at exactly the same time. This is very important. I mean, you cannot be thinking creatively about revenge and at the same time be thinking creatively about making progress with your life. So bitterness, at the end of the day, hurts us probably even more than the people that we are bitter against. We must learn to forgive. And remember, to forgive means to write off a debt. We must be magnanimous enough to let people go to not hold against them anymore the mistakes that they made in the past. In doing that, we give them freedom. We give ourselves also freedom to move on to whatever it is that God has for us in the future. I want to thank you for joining us on this broadcast today, believing that today you will experience freedom like you have never experienced before and that you will find your heart and your mind and your emotions functioning on a new dimension with renewed capacity. And you will suddenly realize a new capacity for dreaming about the future. And more importantly, that you will enjoy God's blessings on all that you do so you can succeed better than you ever did before. The power of forgiveness. That's the topic of our discussion, and I'll be back after this break. Why do individuals fail? Why do nations stagnate? 
Why are countries politically independent but financially dependent? Discover answers to these and other questions in the book The Second Revolution by Sam Adeyemi. The book Second Revolution examines how colonization breeds poverty, low self-esteem and the mentality of irresponsibility. The Second Revolution also teaches you how to break free from the mindset of slavery and lead your nation to freedom. It is the key to positive, radical transformation to success in life. To order for this book, please call 01-875-1234 or 0805-445-4466. The Second Revolution by Sam Adeyemi, your best chance to succeed. Welcome back. This is Success Power. We are discussing the power of forgiveness. Now, it takes maturity to forgive. See? Your being able to let go is what shows that you are on a higher moral plane than the person who refuses to let go of an issue. I remember very well the advice that Christ gave in the scriptures about revenge. He said, if someone slaps you on the right cheek, he said, turn the left one. He said, if someone wants to take your shirt, give him your coat also. He said, if someone wants to compel you to go with him one mile, he said, go two miles. Be ready to go two miles. Some people don't understand what he was talking about. But he was simply challenging us to rise and to seize the higher moral ground against the person who is assaulting us. Listen, if you don't forgive, if you don't have the capacity to bear hurt, you will revenge. You will react to what somebody else has done to you. And you know what? Once you live your life as a reaction, you cannot live your life by vision. I'll say that again. Once you live your life as a reaction, you cannot live that same life by vision. In other words, you will lose control of your life. Whoever it is that is hurting you will be the one dictating your actions and your responses. So, revenging, not forgiving, you know, makes us small, puts us on the lower level spiritually. The mature person is the one who can overlook a fault. The mature person is the one who can forgive or write off a debt. In the last episode, we mentioned about the boss who wrote off a massive debt for his staff. And then the same young man could not write off a small amount of debt for his own colleague. You know, when I look at that illustration, I say to myself, that's why one was rich and the other one was poor. The guy who was poor, his heart was small in size. He had very little capacity for forgiving. He had a small vision. He couldn't let go of a small amount of money. The boss was rich because of his capacity. If someone could forgive such a massive amount of money, it meant that he believed that he was more prosperous than that. To want to kill someone for, you know, depriving you of some small amount of money just simply means that you can't see more than the little you've been deprived of. We've got to learn to forgive. But it takes maturity to forgive. So if you want to become mature, you want to develop the capacity to handle success and to handle power. You need to learn to forgive. Think about it. We used this illustration in our last broadcast about Joseph. 
the man in the Bible who was hurt by his brother sold to 